Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to do a tutorial for you on how to mix in Ableton Live. It's part of this series I've been working on, on how to get started with looping in Ableton. And so this is kind of the next thing, how to mix on the fly as you are performing a song. So if you are interested in that playlist, I will have it linked for you so you can check that out. Before we get started, Thank you. I want to say a shout out to Sweetwater for partnering with me and sponsoring this video. They hooked me up with some super awesome studio monitor headphones. These are what I'm going to be using today. First things first. Mixing is super important because you want everything to sound nice to the listener. You want them to be able to hear your voice. You want them to be able to hear an awesome sick beat that you put down and you want them to hear the bass, make it fat and make it sound super cool. You don't want the drums to be overpowering your vocal and they can't even hear some of the words that you're saying. So it's good to mix and kind of be aware of this while you're performing. Can you hear me? Can you hear the chord progression? Can you hear the rhythm part? It's all super important and makes the performance that much better when you have a really solid mix. It's super nice. So that's why it's super important. And as somebody like myself, and probably you, if you're getting into looping, you're a solo performer. You do everything. And so you don't have an audio engineer most of the time to help you and balance that out and be like, oh no, the guitar is way too loud, pull it down. You know what I mean? That being said, I would suggest really solid studio monitor headphones, which is what I have. And you can really just get any studio monitor headphones as long as they are good for mixing. You wanna be able to hear all the different frequencies when you are performing, because that's gonna give you the most accurate representation of what the song sounds like to your listener. So I have tried in-ear monitors. They're good for like a live setting because they don't look so, you know, studio headphone-ish but you could also just kind of rock that look anyways. That's what I usually do. But so for me, I do prefer some really good studio monitors. That's what I would recommend is some good studio monitor headphones. Uh, I would not use like little earbuds or anything like that because they are not gonna give you the best uh, balance between all those frequencies so that you can hear everything crystal clear. Also, another tip I would say regarding headphones is every pair of headphones is gonna be totally different. These biodynamic headphones are gonna give me a little bit of a different sound than these, which are the Newman headphones. So switching around when you're doing your audio checks beforehand, it's always a good idea to try a couple different pairs of headphones. Another thing is always check your audio beforehand. Always do a test to make sure that everything is, you know, relatively where you want it to be uh, in the mix, like your the volumes of your bass guitar, your whatever, your piano, your voice, all that stuff. Check it beforehand and just make sure it's relatively good, you know, because every song's gonna be a little different. I figure the best way to take you through this is just to kind of like make something up. We'll just make up a song and loop it and then we'll just adjust it on the fly. What we'll do is we'll make a piano part, set the tempo and get a click track going. Start recording. Okay, so we have a piano part. So that's good. Sounds good. Maybe we want to add like a pad or something to kind of make it sound more full. So. This is where mixing gets important when you start layering things up. Okay, so we have our pad. This is why it's so important, okay? So if I go and I turn up the pad really high. Sorry, that was really jarring. Okay, if I turn up the pad really high. Now you can't hear my voice as well. You can't hear the piano, so. Let's back it off. I kind of, what I start to do is just, and you get better at this over time, I feel like when you're performing, but kind of bring it down to where you almost can't hear it and then start bringing it up. So now you can just barely hear it. It's kind of tucked in there like a little like a blanket or something. <laughs> it just adds this little like 
ambience below the piano. I love to layer pianos and pads, or also like acoustic guitar, put a pad underneath, and it just kind of gives it more space. It's really cool. So another thing I like to do too is panning left and right. That helps make it so that, actually I'm gonna turn down the piano even a little bit more because I'm feeling like it's too loud over my voice now. Okay, so we have these. That sounds pretty good to me. So you can pan left and right, and that helps kind of set things and give room for other instruments to come in. So let's just move this pad. Uh... I just moved it to nine, nine to the left. So that just kind of barely moves it over there. You don't want to pan too hard because people, you might have listeners that don't have equal hearing. So if you pan it too far, those listeners might not be able to hear, but at, you know, hear it at all if you move it to a side that they don't have very good hearing on, just for an example. Um, so you want to just do little pans, little pans left and right. All right, so. Let's add some drums. drums. I usually center my drums. Since this falls under the, the uh, umbrella of mixing, I like to add a little bit of reverb too to every instrument um, just so that they all have the same consistent reverb going on throughout. So I add a little bit of reverb to the drums to make it match the piano and all that. So. All right, let's add some guitar. Okay. So now you hear when I added that guitar, it's a little too loud. So we can go ahead and turn it down just a little. I like to just hear the strums. Okay, I like to be able to just hear the strums. So it's just like a flavor of guitar. So, then I would also do a little bit of panning here. I think I'd probably pan the guitar maybe. So we had panned something to the left, the piano. So we'll pan this like the same number. I said nine left on the other one. So we'll go nine right on the guitar just to give it that space. And I kind of envision like a band on the stage. Where would they all be sitting, you know? Some would be over here, some would be over here. We'll just kind of move it around a little bit so it feels like you're kind of in the center of all this music that's kind of surrounding you. That's what's so great about the panning and I think that makes it just sound so cool. I want to tell you guys just real quick about the headphones. Um, the headphones that I'm using are the Newman NDH20 closeback headphones. And oh my god, they're amazing. This is actually my first time ever using them and uh, I just got them from Sweetwater. They had sent them to me um, to do some mixing with, so I, I'm loving these. Okay, I have an affiliate link. Check the description box below if you would like to check out these headphones. The Sweetwater affiliate link is below, and that also gives me a little kickback too, uh, which helps support the channel if you do use that link to shop on Sweetwater. So thank you guys. Okay, so now, we have like a super cool backing track. Maybe we should add, or we have an instrumental, but we should add some bass just to make it a little bigger. Okay, so there's that. And to me, that's a little loud, so we're gonna bring it down. 
that's why it's every song is going to be a little different, and you just have to listen as you go and just kind of mix. And so, like I said, uh, I always bring it down a little bit low and bring it up. That always helps me kind of get a good balance. So now I can. Uh, a little pro tip that I've discovered throughout streaming and doing YouTube and stuff is if you, when you're mixing, talk to your audience a little bit and kind of just, you know, tell people what you're doing or, or whatever. You can talk about anything you want and, you know, tell them, I'm going to add some bass here, something like that, you know, and that kind of gives you an idea of how much room you have left for your vocals. If you feel like you're kind of straining, if you're straining over top of your mix a little bit, turn things down. Because um, when you try to sing, you're gonna feel like ah, like <laughs> like you're trying to like sing way over top of this really loud mix. So I turn it down a little bit as I'm going and I'm talking. As I'm talking to everybody, I'm kind of adjusting things as I go. So I just turn down the piano a little bit right there. Okay, so let's say we're gonna add maybe some vocal harmonies. We'll turn on the reverb. This is a tutorial on how to mix for a loop. This is a tutorial. Okay, so there's our one part. On <laughs> okay, let's add a harmony. So let's say we're making a chorus right now. We need some harmonies. Make it sound cool. On how to mix for a loop. What did I say? This is a tutorial. On how to mix for a loop. This is a tutorial. And I'm turning it up just a little bit because I can really hear it. Oh my god, another pro tip. When you're doing your audio check before, like I was mentioning, you know how you can check your audio, kind of mix everything as you go. Pan some things left and right so that they're automatically set and ready to go. So when you start looping, see how my mic tracks here, these two mic loops. Also, if this is confusing, side note, I do have a tutorial on how to set up looping in Ableton, so check that out if you are interested. These two mic loops right here, see how they're already panned? I have one 11 to the left and one 14 to the, to the right. So I already had that set up. Um, so when you're panning, just kind of play around with that. Do it in your audio check at the beginning of, before you start actually. Let's maybe go 14 and, uh, I don't know, 14. Okay, there we go, cool. And then, so when you add more harmonies, you can kind of put them at different panning to the left and to the right. On how to mix for a loop. This is a tutorial. On how to mix for a loop. This is a tutorial on how to mix for a loop. This is a tutorial. I do that. I have such a habit to just mix instantly. I record it and I bring it down and I bring it back up real quick. And the more you do it, the faster you get, and the more it's just muscle memory. You you stop recording, turn it down, turn it back up, just so nothing's like blasting out at your audience. All right. Okay, cool. This, this sounds pretty good, right? Now we have like a whole thing. Imagine this as a chorus of a song. So now, let's say you want to start singing your verse. So what I like to do, I'm going to turn off the reverb, okay? I just stopped a couple loops, okay? I know it's was, it was a fast move, so just turn off all of those vocal harmonies that you had made. Or let's say you have like a, another instrument, like um, I have violin. Maybe you're like a guitar player or something like that. Add in a little riff or something, some like counter melody part that you can have only in your chorus or, or something like that. Just have fun with it at this point and you can start adding a lot of variety. Like in your second verse, you could bring that guitar part in and maybe not have it in the first one, something like that. So um, there you go. That's pretty much it. So now we sing our verse. We're singing on top of this. I had stopped the mic loops, the bass, and the pad. I just make sure that it's a lot thinner sounding for the verses. And then when you get to the chorus, it all comes in really big here. Hi, doggies. So yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> this is how we bring it back down for a bridge or for our outro. So that 
is it. Well, guys, that pretty much sums it up. Um, of course, this is just a very basic example. You can always add so much more or do whatever, you know, to make it unique to you. And like I said, add some guitar parts or for me, like I add violin parts, whatever cool instrument you play, add that in there. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any ideas for future videos you wanna see, like tutorials or songs or anything like that that you would like to see, let me know. Leave me a comment, I would love to see your guys' thoughts and feelings. My affiliate link with Sweetwater is in the description, so be sure to use that if you do shop on Sweetwater. That helps me out so, so much, so thank you so much for doing that. And thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new here, and be sure to come by someday. I do lots of live streaming on YouTube and on Twitch, and I also post lots of tutorials and other videos here on YouTube, so check that out if you are new here. I'd love to see you. Um, my schedule for live streaming is in the description, so you can see that. And thank you again to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it, you guys. Thank you so much. These headphones are amazing and love them. Thank you guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone.